Got All right, Roundtable Podcast. Wow. I'm your boy, Corey G. That's at Small Arms Danny, Sammy A, <laughs> the graphic gangster, Trey Speed, and we got Anthony Oliveira in the motherfucking house ooh, 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 today. It good? was not fucking small. It's brought to you by MaxEverMuscle.com and Samuel Adams, Boston shout Logger. Out. Yeah, shout out. Just the haze all fucking day. Let's go. And shout out to Treadway. He's vibes. filling in for her Kyle today. Yeah, shout out Treadway. <laughs> so if, you, if, if the camera's on the wrong guy talking, it's Treadway's fault. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't no care. Pressure. He won yeah. jump bros no today. So yeah, yeah, he did win jump bros too, the fucker. <laughs> Jeez. First Anthony, up. first off. It's awesome to have you back, dude. Yeah, dude, it's awesome. I miss to be you, here. bro. It's but been I, a little while. I know it's weird. Like, I like it. You slide right back into the rotation with talking to people and yeah. you show up and stuff. But, like, I miss you guys. It's crazy out here. I want to say before we start, like, first of all, thanks for having me. Second of all, like, every time I show up here, people who don't know, like, what goes on here, mm -hmm. like, they don't get it. I don't yeah, think. Yeah. Like, like, they see all the, like, fun stuff you guys do, <clears> and I don't think they see all the work. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. it's important for people to fucking hear that. Thanks, Anthony. So, like, props to you guys because I walk every time I fucking come in here, there's some new shit that's already been done, and then there's other shit that's getting done on top of that. <laughs> and I'm like, that's you true. guys have yeah. longer days out here than yeah. I do. Like, there's always, like, some some extra shit going on. So, like, the place looks great. I'm really happy to be here. Hell yeah, bro. Um, yeah. First off, you moved away how long ago? Is it 10 months? Nine months. It was December. <clears throat> Nine months to go open a business. You've yeah. been on the show multiple times, so I just want to pick it up. Like, you obviously leave the night crew on good terms, yes. right? So you're leaving your crew, which you love, which yeah. has uh, Dave Hoff in it. Best especially. ever. <laughs> Best ever. Um, you're going to buy out a business. So you're doing in-person training, membership. Like you're taking a leap and you're getting back around your family, which is yeah. fucking epic. Huge. So as you left Columbus, <laughs> which you were here for how many years? Uh, like almost six. Okay, that's a, that's a fucking yeah. grip, bro. Mm -hmm. And you get back home. Now, we haven't seen you in nine or ten months. Like, what has transpired, which I know is a lot, Bro. but give us, like, a download on what your life's been since you yeah. left. Uh, so, well, first of all, I had, like, probably one of the biggest nightmares ever, like, two days after we filmed that podcast here. Uh, my movers didn't show up. My wife has, had already left, and I drove Entrepreneurship. Myself. Dude, I was like, <laughs> guess, like, she had left, and then they never showed up, so she was gone with the dogs, and I... What the fuck? It was, uh, I ended up renting like a 22 foot or 24 foot U-Haul, towing my truck and packed all my shit myself, drove straight from here. I was like, dude, I pulled onto Hilliard Rome Road and fucking Hilliard on my, and I just looked at the GPS and I'm like, I shouldn't have fucking done this. No. Oh, this is bullshit. <laughs> it's like 16 hours because the thing would only go like 55 miles an hour. Oh. And I'm <laughs> fucking, fucking dude, brutal. by myself just like. I'm a machine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nobody, yeah. No one I want it. Yeah, like, yeah, David no Goggins. Dude, yeah. I, like, <laughs> I showed up. I filmed a mental Monday at like four o'clock in the morning in a so fucking good. in a fucking parking lot. I like propped it up on the seat, like stood while it's pumping gas, and I'm fucking <laughs> mental Monday. <Yeah. laughs> and, 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 uh, and it was like I it love was it. one that was just like no one can save you. Yeah, like the only person is you. Yeah. So fuck everything. And you have to do shit like that, bro, if dude, you want to win. It was crazy. So yeah, like. Uh, we lived with my folks for like three months and it was an hour drive each way. Okay. So I was, we were getting up at like quarter to six, which sounds like sleeping into you crazy motherfucker. <laughs> but uh, we were getting up there driving an hour to the gym and we were at the gym all day. When we showed up there, it was like, no disrespect to Brian, but he had been checked out for probably like yeah, two he was or done three with the years. Business. Like there was like ripped up carpet everywhere. The place was a fucking dude was a fucking mess. And so we spent probably the first month cleaning it and then we had to refloor it, it took, like, you know, it took me three and a half hours just to get the mats downstairs to the fucking place. Dude, moving like, those stall mats suck. Fuck those it's things. Yeah, Dude, bro. It makes me want to murder everyone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us how you really <laughs> feel. I never want to touch those things again. So we got it all set. We did uh, the walls and all this stuff and kind of like that was a crazy time for me. I think we talked a little bit then, but it was like. We're driving an hour each way and we've got like a morning session and then there's like the dead time in the middle of the day like, yep. gym, like there always is but we can't go home during that it's too far so i'm trying to sneak in a training session in there for me by yourself yeah like, or with val yeah, yeah with val and like one other dude and mm. like it was like just kind of a shit show so i hurt my back pretty good to the point where i couldn't hand out any bench over 135. Mm. um i lost like 25 pounds tore my pec like just Everything that could possibly go wrong sure. was going wrong. And, but at the same time, it's like I had all the shit with trigger warning. Cause like, that was like a 60 plus hour a week job. Like, sure. you know how it is. Like, yeah, yeah. 
you're never like people are like how many hours a week do you work? I'm like how many hours are there? In I a can't week? even answer that question. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm working <laughs> when I'm taking a shit, bro. Like, yeah. I, I get up for a meet. Which, I'm working which, when I take a shit. Like for real, like, <laughs> it's too true. Like you sit down, and you're like, oh fuck. Pull that clip. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like going to this last so meet good. that I did. Like we literally woke up in the morning and Val's driving me to the meet and I'm coaching people driving to him. Like I just work. Like that's yeah. just mm -hmm. you know. Um, so during that time, it was like Val would drive. I would be in the passenger seat fucking falling asleep trying to type on my computer programming because, you know, I'm still dealing with 30 plus lifters in my group, plus mm -hmm. the Patreon, plus everything. Hell like, yeah. It was insane. At that point, Val wasn't helping me with any of the back end stuff with trigger warning. Mm -hmm. So I was still doing like all of my editing for my videos, all of my shit. Yeah, now you're doing it my, all. Now for my vlog, I just I video it and I send it to her. Yeah, that's cool. And she does that like. You know, it's well, like, yeah, it's Val squats as, 700, everybody. Yes. Yeah, she don't so, fucking around. Just yeah, say, just say. Shout, <laughs> so, Shout out, Val. <laughs> so she does all of the, like, back-end stuff for the business, too, which is Hell good yeah. because, like, I'm the type of dude that if I'm under a car, I would never be under a car working on something. But in that situation, <laughs> like, I'm not that person. But, like, yeah. if I needed a, t if there was a tool that I could make work that was the wrong tool, I would make it work just to get it done. Val's the type of person that would get up and use the right one. Yeah, yeah, So she handles, I'm more like you, I think. Yeah, I'm like, whatever, I'll fucking Look, I don't it need a Phillips. She's like, fuck it, I could use this flathead. Right, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and she's like, dude, if we just do this paperwork now. If you can just focus for a second, we'll be set up. You married the right girl. Yeah. Bro. Oh, yeah. She crushes. <laughs> she crushes. So, um, yeah, we're driving. I'm, I'm like falling asleep the whole time, like trying to balance all this stuff, losing weight. And then I got like skinny fat for a second because I was like, I was like, dude, it was terrible. I was like, all right, I got to put weight on. This is fucking bullshit. I'm 241 pounds. I, like, yeah, I haven't been this so small, small. In fucking years. Wow. <laughs> like for me. Well, dude, I mean, like I, so I floor you pressed, like uh, 260. Normally, yeah, right? yeah. I floor pressed 520. Right. I yeah. tore my pec with or 520. Uh, I tore my pec with 435. Wow. Like I was in a bad spot. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I'm like, all right. fuck. But it. the flip side is your business stuff was in a good spot. It was good. So that's yeah. tough. It was hard because I'm like, all right, like we're at that time. We weren't paying rent. We're stacking fucking cash. Yeah. Dude, like, we were still eating out of Tupperware three meals a day yeah. and going out to eat every day also and still saving crazy money because, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, so it was a good spot, but it was really frustrating for me because I finally got to the point where I'm like, yo, if I can't train to the capacity that I want to, none of this is worth it and I'll work construction. There you go. Fuck this. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not doing this. So we just put the hammer down, bought a house, like found a house. First house we looked at, we fucking bought. Hell yeah. Um, It's like, fucking three miles from the gym that so it's awesome. really really cool yeah. um and like everything just kind of fell into play i don't want to say fell into place because we forced the like yeah, you yeah, said yeah, before yeah, like yeah. forced the fucking issue yeah. like we made it happen but that first those first two months were hectic as fuck and then the third month like we we're like we gotta get i love my parents <laughs> but living with your parents bro, again when you're 30 is tough bro bro, bro. <laughs> Me, my wife, two dogs, and my two 70 year old parents in a two bedroom condo that's like 1,800 square feet. <laughs> like, I love yeah. my parents. Yeah, was, of course. Like my buddy said, he was like, he's like, oh, they're not charging you rent. And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, he's like, well, things can be free, but there's always a cost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm yeah. like, yeah, it's a different type of cost. <laughs> yeah. like, you know, so, um, but we were that's ready to get fact. out of there. And uh, we moved into the house, and it's been really good. Uh, got to the point this summer where if like 10 people showed up and wanted memberships, I would have to turn them away. It was, so yeah. we were too busy. And so we were in a yeah. 2,200 square foot place. We just literally Sunday, this Sunday, we finished moving into a new spot. That's 3,800 square feet. That looks gangster Fuck too. Yeah. 20 foot ceilings. Like it's, Fuck it yeah. looks, it's like a Similar kind of a mini, yeah, yeah. A mini version of what you guys got going on. And we'll be able to push like open gym membership because like, there's not two doors where we were at before we were in another building. There was two doors. It closed at, it locked at 10. Like uh -huh. I couldn't, it wasn't big enough to have trainers come in for like yeah. passive income and shit. So I was like, fuck this. We ended up being in like kind of a handshake deal on the lease. Mm -hmm. So my business partner was like, yo, if you leave, like I'll come with you. Like, yeah, fuck, yeah. I'll sell this fucking place and I'll just come with you. And so it's That's worked so out good. really good. Yeah. Like the new spot is like, I'd say it's 90% done. We just got to get a turf in there. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's been like, we've been really fortunate. Our gym members are sick and I'm trying to like, I said it to someone the other day. I'm like, I'm trying to be the dude with a face tattoo that drives a fucking G wagon. Yeah. So I'm done. just trying to like push yeah, bro. as much as I can to get like, you know, as many people in there as possible. And I can see that our, uh, our business partner actually, it's weird calling him that, but, uh, he does this thing that's like, um, basically his thing is like 
AA is mm-hmm. not just cigarettes and coffee. It's like the community. Yeah. And the gym can be that too. So he's doing this thing called he ties Iron, that into it. Yeah, That's Iron sick. Helix. And he's got a non for profit that we're working with for like people who are in a halfway house. We're not taking people off the street. Yeah. It's people who are like getting tested and like they're clean. They've been sober for a little yeah, bit. They need that. They next. come in and um, kind of create a community with that. So I think there's a lot of potential there too. And Hell I feel yeah. like kind of because of my background. Of course. I feel like it's the right thing to do. I'm not like super passionate about it, but I think but if it's you the could right lend thing. a hand to it, yeah, yeah. it's the yeah. right thing to do. And um, those people, like everybody, deserves a second. chance. Because how long you been off opiates for? Uh, it was just it was 12 years. I like, thought two you weeks just posted ago. that. Fuck yeah, Anthony. yeah. So that was pretty cool. People, like, dude, I hate those fucking posts. But I feel like I got messages from people who, but like, other people Yo, need you've them. You've helped bro. me yeah. with this yeah. and whatever. And it, uh, it's cool to hear like Hell that. Yeah. I mean, it's all worth it, right? If one person mm-hmm. doesn't die because of some dumb shit, like Hell sick. Yeah. For sure. You know what I mean? What I love, Anthony, is because, you know, I met you originally at West Side randomly on a Sunday. I obviously followed you online because yeah. I was a fan of your lifts and stuff. And then hearing you talk about multiple streams of income, passive income, just like, and even you just taught that, me that, Dad. I know, but just even that, <laughs> <laughs> yes, and I'm very proud. But the nine or ten months, even since you've been gone, which we talk quite a bit, but just like the, what you've accomplished, what you've done, just getting to new, the way that you're thinking, you're ripping off, yeah, the Patreon, this, that, that like, it's just fucking awesome. And yeah. this is what, this is uh, the, I guess the way that it needs to be when guys go from really great lifters to now I think can be really great business people because yeah. it's the same type of discipline. And when they don't make that transition, it's usually when they hate me <laughs> <laughs> instead of learning or helping. Yeah. Right. And so the guys that I've, you Ramos guys, I've had like great business relationships with and have helped and, and they have helped me in return too. like, it, it's just, I don't know. So gratifying because you guys are so good at this and then when you can apply, which is, by the way, what Arnold was teaching everybody. Yeah. Everybody. He said, oh, I'll, I'll apply the things I learned in bodybuilding to fucking acting. Mm-hmm. I'll apply it to real estate. I'll apply it to this. That's the same fucking thing. I'm just trying to do the same thing. Okay, well, I've learned these things. These guys are great at this. And if they really want to be great at this other thing, too, oh, it's there. Yeah, you just have to decide to do it. There you go. It just is. Like, it I just, just you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Like, I just want to commend you on it, bro. Because the, 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 the progress is... Is well, really, really good. Bro, I used to get stressed out. If I had 25 t-shirts coming in and I was doing a drop and I had to do inventory for 25 t-shirts, I was like, <laughs> clear the fucking schedule. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> get, I got to go to bed. You can Early handle tonight. more as you get better, yeah, well, too. I, I was explaining that to Val, right? So, like, this is her first, Val's my wife for people who don't. So, mm-hmm. she, this is her first time leaving a job with a paycheck into an entrepreneurial situation, yep. right? And the first, when we were living with my folks, she's like, dude, I don't know if I can fucking do this. And I'm like, listen, we'll figure it out. Yeah. When we first did the thing, optimistic I entrepreneur, my, yeah, I was like, when we first, <laughs> dude, it's either you're going to like, it's like survive or die. Right. Yeah, it's like, what are we going to get a job at McDonald's? Fuck that. Like, what are we yeah. doing? Of course we're going to make this work. So, but, you know what I mean? Fu- like, yeah, like yeah. fuck that. So I was like, you know, when we first moved to Ohio, I was making $300 a week and you were working part time as a fucking breakfast waitress. Yeah. And we made that shit work. Ground, ground turkey, broccoli, rice, barbecue sauce, six nights a week, motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. Like we had no money and we figured it out. And then as you go up, you level up. You, okay, we got you a new car because your car was fucked up. Well, now we have an extra payment and it was stressful. And then we figured that out. And then it's like, you know, when I had 20 clients, it was stressful. Mm. And then all of a sudden, 20 was not stressful. <laughs> and then you just figure out the systems, right? And like we've talked about before, where it's like, I was terrible at the system thing. I was like, we'll figure it out. Yep. But like, I've gotten better at that. And I was telling her, I was like, dude, when we first moved into our house, it, we cut our drive by 57 fucking minutes. So good. And we were still like, why do I feel like I'm running around? Mm-hmm. Right? And she's like stressed out about it. I'm like, dude, listen, we'll figure out the systems. Like, it's all good. We had one conversation where she's like, yo, if you want to work on trigger warning stuff when we get back from the morning session, I will do all the house stuff. Just tell me what you need done and give me some free time. Like, it's all Hell good. Yeah. And, and as soon as she said that, I'm like, bet. Like, okay, I'll do this. Like, this is what I would like for my meal, like, or whatever we got. Just cook it up. Like, it's all good. And she handles all that shit. Sweet. Gets to spend more time with the dog. Like, she's really, you know, loves that. And um, it's stress. Like, running a business with your wife is tough. Like, you know, cause you're yeah, involved in and it's yeah. tough. It's stressful and stuff. But 
Um, You're teaching her that freedom's possible though. And see, my wife, you know, was a teacher, like, and her dad worked as an engineer. Like she never really was around any entrepreneurial people. So it's like, I'm teach. And she was, I would say pessimistic normally. Like that's kind of, I don't think her parents are bad people. They're amazing. Yeah. But that's just their first point of view is never optimism. Yeah. It is actually more now because I think I've proved it so to be (laughs) right. Because you make it happen. But but that's not their norm. Yeah. So even to this day, sometimes she goes pessimistic first because it's the way she's kind of just ingrained. Yeah. But it's changed over time. She said I brainwashed her because once you've proven enough, they start to believe like, oh, if Anthony says this, that's probably what will happen. Well, you can just make it happen. And if it doesn't happen, we're going to learn how to do it better the next time. There you go. And it's felt really good. Like, you know, all you need is a little bit of something from from your old lady and it makes everything better, right? Facts. She calls me the other day. She's She was shopping and she was just like, you know what, dude? Like, thank you. Like, a lot of your hard work has given me a pretty cushy life. And I'm like, what do you mean? She's like... I go to work in my yoga pants. Yep. I can go shopping. Which you I, like, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Word. <laughs> shout, out to you. shout out to whoever created yoga pants. <laughs> Not sure who you are, but you need a fucking you're, like you're metal. Like a metal. Big yeah. W yeah. for you, yeah. So, and she's like, you know, I can go shopping when I want to. And like, we can, I can go see my parents for the weekend. I can do whatever. And like, a lot of that is because of stuff you've done. And not, like, dude, that's all I like that motivated me more. Yeah. That, like, that shit feels good and sounds corny, but like, it's not corny. As soon as she said that, it's like being the like people, like, whatever society doesn't necessarily like it, but being that like standard masculine male, like, provider, protector. Yeah. I like that. I've never been that person in the, in my past lives. Like, you know, I've never mm-hmm. been like the guy who made the money. And now it's nice to have that, have it set up so like, she loves her job. She loves what she does. It's not crazy stressful for her in the same way. We Fuck went and yeah. visited her old work at like uh, this restaurant she worked at yesterday. <laughs> and when we left, I wasn't trying to be a dick. I was just like, so this is your first time going back to a job that you left to be an entrepreneur. She like, yeah. and I was like, what's it like to sit there and listen to people and you talk to them and you say, oh, is so-and-so, did, did they end up doing this? Did they?" End up? And literally every single person didn't end up doing what they said they were going to do. And you fucking did. Yeah. I'm like, does that feel good? She's like, I don't. And then like it's maybe two feeling. hours later, she's like, that does feel good. <laughs> like yeah. she thought about it. I'm like, yeah, like, and nothing wrong with those people. <laughs> no. She, you know, some, well, some. Yeah. She's not looking to make anybody feel bad. No. It's just more about like, okay, I'm thrown back in this situation. These and I people did are still talking about the same thing they were talking about when I left. Yeah. And everybody there was like, how's work? And they're like, oh, this bullshit, this thing, this thing, this thing. And they're like, how's the gym? And she's like, it's fucking sick. Yeah. Like it's every stress we have is good stress Yeah, for the most part. Like obviously money comes into the play. Sometimes we're like, fuck, how are we going to come up with that? Like, but all it's like, oh man, I'm too busy because too many people want to pay me for training. Like, <laughs> shut the fuck up. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, oh, boo fucking who. Yeah. It's like, yeah. cry like, me oh, a fucking I have river. To sit in my house, yeah. uh, barefoot in my underwear, answering emails for money. Like, ooh, you know what I mean? So I it's like, love it. whenever I start feeling sorry for myself, I'm like, shut the fuck <laughs> up. Just shut the fuck up. Like, you know what I mean? It's like when we went out to, like, I surprised her with a trip to Vegas or whatever. She had never been out there. And, that was like gangster. No, yeah, we're it is. On, we're <laughs> yeah, sitting there on yeah. our computers, and I was just like, "Hey, did you get that email I sent you?" She's like, "What? Do you, I just sent it to you." She pulls it up, and it's just the itinerary. Hell the yeah, she never been. She's like, "What the fuck?" But you know, we go there and that's awesome. Land, so uh, that is land, long. walk around for a minute, go back. I'm like, "All right, I gotta crush some work real quick before we go see Cirque du Soleil or whatever the fuck we were doing." I'm like, "Yeah," you know. And I'm sitting there, and I'm like, "Man, this is fucking stupid. I hate that." And then I'm like, "No, no, 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 no." I'm in fucking Vegas. This computer right now has allowed me the opportunity yes. to do this, and it's like, I'm not worried about the work that I've got when I've got ba- get back home. Oh, I'm God. just doing this now, real quick, stay on top of it, and like that allows me the freedom to do this. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't let myself do the victim mentality shit. As soon as I feel it start creeping in, I'm like, so what dumb. I do is when I complain about stuff. Cause these are my friends. I have to complain. And then they look like they feel sorry for me. I always go, don't cry me a fucking river. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's like, boo, but boo. I need somebody to tell, you know, I, mean? like, I hit you know. myself with the dear diary. I'm like, dear diary <laughs> today. Go fuck I'm, yourself. I'm, I'm, sad. <laughs> I'm sad because I'm too busy. Like, it's like, no dude. Like I'd rather be too busy than coming back home at 5 PM and hating my job and you oh, know what yeah. I mean? And like just sitting on a couch watching TV, like mm-hmm. I'll complain sometimes like we don't have enough time to like sit around and watch a movie or whatever. And it's like, yeah, but fuck all that. Like, yeah, we have time to like impact people's lives and we spend all our time together and like we can vacate. Like this was easy. I call, I made two phone calls. I'm like, Hey, can you cover Tuesday, Thursday, Friday? Cool. All right. See ya. And wow. we're out. Yeah. You know what sick. I mean? And that just makes my life really nice. And 
it's good for us too, like good for Val because we get to try. We could do whatever the fuck we want, and we're home to see, like my niece was born. I get to have like a connection with my newborn niece, like yeah, and that's really cool for me too. It's definition mm-hmm. of freedom, bro. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah. So I'm curious on what's it been like for you, and if you could explain what it's like having multiple different businesses like you have your patreon for training yeah you have the clothing drops you have now the gym and training clients what's it like for you to kind of segment out and be like all right i need to work on this i need to do this film content because we talk it a lot about how you know we have max we have Corey g we have all this other stuff we're working on and it's hard for people to actually believe that there's so much shit going on or how we manage that yeah so if you could explain it uh yeah, for me, it's, like, a little different because I'm not quite as insulated. Like, I have less going on. Tilt, tilt this toward you a little bit. Sorry. There you go. You got it. Uh, like, I have less going on. I'm not as insulated as, like, because you guys have, like, oh, we need a design. Send it. We need pictures. Send it. It makes it. But, like, there's still a lot of work, but you guys have more shit. For me, it's, like, I have to figure out, okay, when am I going to film content? When am I? So... It's because yours isn't all the way in house yet, right? That's how I used to be. Yeah, and then like, it's like the next step is I got guys here that can. I'm trying to be, learn yeah. how to delegate certain things, so we're working on getting an intern to like film content there. It's like a high school student; he gets to use it as a credit. Worst case scenario, the stuff is trash, but eventually he gets better, and I could use him in the future. Like I mean, Trey had know? never taken pictures of really anything except for probably with his fucking phone. Yeah, before yeah. that day, I remember that. Yeah, fake, I mean, fake like, until you make it, baby. Yeah. Like that's sick. yeah, of course. And, uh, he fucking, and he told me the first, and I'll never forget this. He sends the first amount of pictures, and he says, "I will get better." Yeah. Like he literally, I don't know exactly, but that's what he said. Like. Gee, I, I, I will get better at this. Like, and I just believed him because I was yeah. like, Trey felt guilty the first time. He's like, yeah. I know this isn't too good, but uh, yeah, yeah, but he just, he just, he just, he like, just assured me I will good, get better. That's the right, that's the right mentality. <laughs> though, yeah. Instead of the like, oh fuck this, I'm not good at this. So yeah, like for me, I've thought about before. I go through like it's all up and down, right? So I've gone through phases where I'm like, okay, from this time to this time, I'm gonna do this. And this time, this, and then like, but I'm like kind of too wild for that. So I'm just mm-hmm. like. Basically, what I'll do is I wake up in the morning, I do my lunges, I go to the gym, I coach people for a couple hours in the morning. When I'm there, because I'm talking about training with people, I kind of will come up with content ideas yep. potentially then or whatever. Or I'm vlogging there while I'm talking to people. You make notes of stuff if they hit you. I do uh, voice memos. Yeah, that's right. You're the voice memo. Yeah, thing. yeah. I've, that's I've, what I love about yeah, it. Me, yeah. me and Cole talked about that. <laughs> sends voice memos. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. that. And, and I, I've started doing the, that a little bit yes. with people too. I'm big on that. So I'll it's do, more personal. I'll do voice yeah. messages, and it's easier, like coaching wise, bro. It's yeah. way easier if someone sends me a voice sure. to do that. So then I'll come home. I got a couple hours in the middle of the day, so I'll come home and do like all of the email stuff, which is like my Facebook group, my Patreon, all that shit. Any sort of like financial shit I need to deal with. I try and do it then. And then if I have clients, like depending on which day it is, sometimes I'll have clients like, you know, 1230, sometimes 130, whatever. And I'll go back like 20 minutes early and I'll just stand in the middle of the gym and be like, what's a thing that seems like everyone would know it already (laughs) that I need to show people how great to do. Act. Like, I just sit there and I'm just like, Anthony. what <laughs> pisses me off that people do wrong that they should fucking know? I'm like, yeah. oh, they suck at cable rows and they curl the cable rows. Okay, bet. I'm going to film that. Yep. And then I just film it and, and whatever. And then, um, <laughs> you know, like, I try to, I try to get everything done as it comes in so that I don't have stuff piling up. Hmm. And that's like really can be kind of stressful sometimes. So I'm still the answer. To the question is I'm still figuring out what I do know is that I've gotten better at uh, like compartmentalizing my stress. Mm-hmm. So when I'm at the gym and I'm dealing with in person, 17 year old soccer athletes or whatever, I do not have my laptop open on the fucking yeah. reverse hyper. And I used to, I Got used it. to be like coaching someone walk over t- t- like on the yeah. thing and like and then you're just giving 30 percent to everybody you're not present mm-hmm. i would rather close that shit put it down and then like there's times where i'm like hey val i'm gonna sit down outside the door i gotta handle this shit can you watch in here what and she does that and i handle it. like i have to separate it because i thought when i first came out there i was like oh word i'll run the hooks on the monolith walk over do some coaching i'll get everything done while i'm in the gym and it won't add any time to my work hours fucking wrong like, <laughs> yeah. no, um, wah, wah. I do feel like the gym 
initially caused my content creation to kind of go backwards a little bit um, because I didn't have the free time in my head mm-hmm. to like kind of put stuff together. And now it kind of elevates it. Hell so yeah. it just depends. Especially with the yeah. new the new spot too. New You're going to be excited to create yeah, stuff, Yeah, there's bro. all sorts of like opportunity there for like the filming. Like the film looks better in there because it yeah. looks more like a gym and less like a dentist office. Like yeah, it yeah, just yeah. is like. Lighting looks sick. Yeah, yeah. And, um, it looks like a fucking powerlifting gym. Right. Well, like that's like the thing. Right? And, and like we're the only gym like in the area that has monolifths. Yeah, you got and three monolifts, like, I saw. Three monos, three deadlift platforms. Fuck every yeah. bar you can think of, two belt squats, two reverse hypers, GHDs. Like, Plenty. Uh, we have a plyo, like the OG plyo swing, which is sick. Hell yeah. Uh, good girl, bad girl, fuck it. Like everything you could possibly imagine. And then also like strongman stuff. Yeah. So stones, kegs, all that sick, shit. Sick, dude. Um, and now we have the space outside too, so they can do all their like heavy strongman shit that makes a mess fucking outside. And, and tons to of sled work too. Yeah. So basically long answer, short answer to a long answer is like, I'm still figuring it out. It's just stre- like you wrote, like it's like. You know how when you're training and you're like, oh, dude, fucking reverse curl is like just how my biceps grow. And then you just do reverse curl and then suddenly you're like, this is stupid. Actually, that doesn't work. I do this other thing. (laughs) And like you go through phases where you're like, oh, dude, sets a 10 of everything. That's where the growth is. And then you do that until it doesn't work and you're like, oh, no, I'm an idiot. I'm going to do it this way. That's how I feel about how I run my business. Like I'll be like, I'll be like all in be like, yeah, motherfucker, super diligent schedule i need this and then i'll just like burn it all down and be like i'll just, just but do it as creatives it yeah. don't work only in a box that's why i can't I, be in a cubicle dude it correct. don't fucking work for me so like for <laughs> me you know we have this sick setup i shoot i don't know 150 daily fires here i don't think i've shot the last 30 here i've done them on my it's, phone this is true you know what i mean just because that's what's felt like the vibe for yeah me. so it's like i think now, what I've tried to do better is give them blocks three and four at a time, and do. And sometimes I'm good at that, sometimes I'm not. Yeah. But if I get rolling, I could do ten in a day. You know yeah. what I mean? So I try to feed the machine when it, when it it can be fed. Yeah. And then the other times, like that's why I need these guys keeping me accountable to do what I need to do for the business because sometimes it it ain't there. So it's yeah. like it is. It's tricky, but you got to rock when it's rocking. Well, so, yeah. Sometimes I get an idea for something, and I'm like, I got to do this right, right now. fucking now. Yes. Cause I've got like sometimes the delivery. Cause like, you know how you see stuff online. Someone will post, especially in the fitness world. Like you see someone post something and you're like, man, that's a awesome idea. And you delivered it so poorly <laughs> yeah, yeah. and your content is so ass that mm-hmm. no one is going to see this. Right. <laughs> yeah. But like, if you, if you get the, the verbiage, right. Sometimes I'll say something to someone in the gym and they'll be like, yo, like I said, what did I say? It was like, you only have one shot. You only have one chance to do the first rep right. Yeah. I just like yelled that at someone in my training group. And Val was like, write that shit down. Yeah, yeah, And then yeah. I made a post out of it. Hell yeah. And it was just something that organically, I said that the other day, this dude was squatting, like had his elbows up like this. And I was like, you're squatting like a fucking bulldog, dude. And he's like, yeah, I don't know. It's not a compliment. <laughs> I, go, I, go, I, go, I go, I need less bulldog and more German shepherd. <laughs> yeah. and, 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 That's and good, I, dude. That's good. That like, well, more proper like, chest. Write, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> write that shit down. You know? So like, uh, sometimes stuff like that just happens where we're like, okay, like we're going to make content of that in the future. And so this I is think, your job. Yeah, it's wild. <laughs> it's fucked. Sometimes I'm like, is this re-? like... Did this Did really, really work? Yeah, man. Like I get like, I, I think emotional about it sometimes. I'm like, man, like I am such a fuck up my whole life. And then all of a sudden, like this sort of happened. Like I told Val, I think I might have said it the last time I was here, but when I moved out to Columbus, I had six hundred dollars. Like that, that fucking whole cliche story, Panora tells the same thing. Yeah. We all were disenfranchised idiots that were like, fuck it. Like live whatever. in my car, throw my life away and see if this works. But uh <laughs> I literally but the was, thing is, it's true it with a lot of the guys. Yeah, yeah like we're just like, oh, fuck it. I guess we'll just see. And I, for some reason, like when I was driving out, I remember being like, all right, I got 600 bucks. I don't have to pay rent. I'm making 250 bucks a month from the five people that I'm training online. How long can I make this last before I have to go back home with my tail between my legs? Hopefully I can do something cool before then. Yeah, and, and the, then it just the answer is six years. Yeah, and then you exactly. went home and bought a gym. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So like, it just like it's crazy how it worked out. So sometimes I'm shocked at myself, like that I could do this stuff. You know what I mean? And, and now it just seems like I do you know said, what you mean. Once you do it, like you said it to me when I was like, I've talked to fucking six banks, 
and they will not give me this fucking loan. I don't know what to do. On paper, I can pay these. Da, da, da. And you're like, that's what separates. Like the thing that separates someone who's successful in this business of people who keep swinging, mm -hmm. they go. And the people who stop swinging, and it's the same thing with lifting weights. You got it. Boo-hoo, you bombed out of three meets. Are you going to fucking quit powerlifting, you dork? Like, <laughs> yeah. No, you keep swinging and you come back for another one. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And it's the same thing with this. So, um, That's a great That's a great parallel. It's campaign. all the same, dude. Like, you're either it is fucking, all the same. Dude, winners fucking win. Like, you either are a person who accomplishes things or you're a pussy and you don't accomplish yeah. things. I yeah, don't I'm going to eat, my, to I'm eat some it. shots. <laughs> I'm going to eat some shots every now and again, but... I know I'm going to win ultimately. That's what I'm saying. Like, and that's sort of like that whole, all those cliche things like get knocked down nine, stand up 10. It's like just part oh, of it's it. real. Like I said it to a kid when I was kept getting hurt. I'm like, you know, he, he kind of offhandedly said like, you know, if I tore my bicep, I'd probably quit. And I'm like, man, there's no finish line for me. Just so you know, like mm -hmm. I've been hurt three times this fucking week. I have to put my belt on to fucking hand out two plates to someone because my back is <laughs> fucked up. Just you can miss is. me with all that. Like, I'm going to keep swinging and keep showing up. Hell yeah. And, uh, you know, this dude, Mike Burrow, he said something really interesting to me. He, he runs this gym called Wyndham County Strength in Connecticut. Awesome dude. He's 43 or 44. He's broke Shout his, out, Mike. Yeah, broke his forearm, torn both quads off. Like, he's a savage. And he's like, you know, listen, like, when I get hurt, it's annoying. But, like... I'm not going to stop lifting. So it's like, okay, this will be annoying for a few months and I have to figure this out and then I'll just keep training. I just got you, smarter every time. When you apply it, like you said, like it took you what, three years, two years, three years yeah. to come back. It's like, but what are you going to not fucking come back? Like, of course you are. Yeah. It's just going to take some time. And I think business is the same thing. Like we saw, yeah. we saw a dip in the trigger warning stuff a little bit. And, uh, I was like, well, what am I going to do? Shut the fucking Instagram down? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. no, I'm just going to ride this out, keep putting out good content, and it'll come back. Yeah, that's why I keep and telling uh, my kids I'm about to be a fucking TikTok star next. I'm just going to get, <laughs> I'm going to get hot again. And then motherfuckers are going to, we're going to bring new people in for Corey G, for Max, for the podcast, for everything. It's like, just inevitable. Yeah. Because I'm going on some Tom Brady shit. I ain't going nowhere, bro. No. It just, well, this is. It's what am I going to like, shut it down when I'm about to go make all time numbers? No. Fuck out of here. It's just like brushing your teeth. Yeah, like you, it's just something you do. Like I don't yeah. need, and I do it twice a day. I don't, <laughs> I don't need, I don't need, motiv I don't need motivation. Out. Yeah, you know no. what I'm saying? Because, like, it's super easy to do all this stuff when you're motivated. Mm -hmm. But the difference is, like, like they said, like discipline. Like discipline creates freedom. So, like, I just know, at five thirty on a Friday, I'm gonna be getting on a foam roller, and at six thirty on a Friday, I'm squatting. gonna be fucking squatting. Yep. And like, whether I want to or don't. <laughs> Doesn't matter That's what I'm doing. It's not a decision. And it's like same things like, dude, like I, sometimes I sit down, I'm like, yeah, I can't wait to coach people. I'm super motivated. I can't wait to do that. And then sometimes it's like, man, I don't really want to tell people to push their knees out when they're coming off the box. I've been saying the same shit for fucking whatever, how many yeah. years, but I just do it. Cause it's just part of, and all of it beats doing oh. stuff you don't want to do all the time. Yes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> all of it beats yes. beating nails into fucking two by fours for me. Some people might really yeah. dig that sort of work. For me, it, it beats it every time. My worst day at the gym is better oh. than my best day when I was doing demo and bathroom remodels and all that, painting on a fucking 30-foot ladder. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, <laughs> fuck that. <laughs> Danny. Hell no. <clears throat> uh, you've said it multiple times and then kind of rewinding back, but and it's something we say here all the time, but figuring things out like kind of as you go. Yeah. Like There's never, you know, there's going to be constantly iterations and iterations of things. So you said that you were super anxiety ridden with the 25 shirt, uh, you know, drop or whatever. Yeah. And then now you clearly are, you know, obviously confident under the squat bar, but like in with your own business and stuff like that, you bought a business and everything. So like how kind of like connect those two dots? Like how did you go from this person and then what kind of happened along the way or what were some impactful things for you? So I think part of it is just being having more stuff thrown at you. Like I had one situation where we had a big drop. It was three shirts, socks and banners. And I did the promos for them. And I was like, I, I had been, you know, posting them, whatever. And people were stoked. I think we did. 70 or 50 shirts of each, like 50 mm -hmm. shirts of each and we had the banners so i'm pumping it up pumping it up i did the promo video like yo friday this 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 and this mm -hmm. 
And then I'm looking at the shirts and I'm like, these are fucked up. I, I remember this. I do not like yeah. the quality of these shirts. Long as it's not worth getting into the specifics of that, but I was like, I can't sell these. I cannot do it. I will not do it. Smart. The socks, the banners were tight. Like they looked great. I had those in hand. The shirts were fucked. So I'm like, how am I going to, I called you and I'm like, dude, I don't know. I'm fucked. Like, so I'm thinking this. And I was just like, what if I say, make a video, the quality of these shirts are not what I wanted them to be. So we're going to do a pre-order instead. I'm going to send these back. We're going to do a pre-order. You can obviously still get the um, banners and socks. They're just going to get to you later than they would because we got to wait for the shit to come in. And people appreciated that because they know quality then they control. know that the quality is going to be sick. Yeah, it's huge. Um, and we ended up selling. We ended up doing like a hundred plus of each shirt. Like it was, dude. It folding the shirts by myself. I remember I woke up, I fucking did my lunges and I was folding shirts until 10 o'clock at night watching documentaries. In my house. <laughs> like literally 12 hours That's of amazing. fucking bullshit. Yeah. But it's like the whole time was like, hell yeah, dude, money. Like it's like yeah. cha-ching, yeah. cha-ching. Like, and, and people really responded well to that. So that was one where I had to like use Just it. Just be pivot, honest, bro. Pivot yeah. and figure out what's, what's wrong. Mm -hmm. And then also like, I think, I don't know what like your levels are for your squatting or whatever, but like, or the weights, but it's like the first time you hold three plates in your hands. You're like, holy fuck, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then when you hold 350 in your hands, you get that same feeling. But when you hold the 315 again, you're like, this ain't shit, it. I've done this. Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing. Now it's like- It is the same thing. Any orders that come in that are fucked up, I'm like, zero stress, motherfucker. Like, I don't, you know what I mean? Like, we mm -hmm. when we did these shirts, there was a mess up somewhere where we got the wrong sizes. We only got like four 2XLs. Huh. That's going to work for and your community. And I was community. like, fuck my life. <laughs> like, fuck you know what I mean? Like, I'm like, this is not good. Yeah. But then Val was just like, dude, like, we're still, we like, only we're order, we only order five 2XLs, by the <laughs> way, here and back. <laughs> just to give I'm you like, this, I'm like, this ain't going to do it. So yeah. I was like, she was like, dude, but who cares? Like, this is going to give some of the smaller people that miss out because you only do two or three shirts or whatever to get them and we ended up almost selling out anyway and i had several guys hit me with like oh bro you sold out of 2xl i'm like well we'll rerun these shirts first yep. of all so that's you kind of get a second bump from that mm -hmm. and two weeks later i released different shirts that i had like you know double or triple the <clears throat> amount of the bigger sizes and they all fucking flew because Hell people yeah. were hungry for merch mm. and it's like you're gonna miss sometimes you're gonna and like i just don't stress it as much anymore it's just like I kind of had stuff thrown at me so much. It's yeah. really good to have Corey in my back pocket to be like, dude, what do I do? Like, what do you think? Like <laughs> yeah. with this situation. Yeah. Um, but I also just like, I'm really good at <clears throat> closing my eyes and listening to people that I believe are better than me. Mm -hmm. So like when Hoff tells me something, I'm like, I don't give a fuck, bro. You tell me anything. I'm doing it. <laughs> yeah. I said it to him. I said it to him on Wednesday. I was like, I was like, I did 680 off of one board. He's like, what's your best? I'm like 705. He's like, take 735. I was like, I, you know, my best, yeah, I don't know. Like, let's go seven, <laughs> let's go seven, let's go seven. Cause that's how Hoff operates. Seven, seven, 10, he goes seven fifteen. just do exactly. Deal. And I go, dude, I'll literally, if you told me to put 800 on it and I could do it, I'll fucking take it right now. Like you tell me what to do. I'm going to do it. Fuck yeah. And the same way, like the first time we spoke on the phone, like a real business conversation, mm -hmm. you told me a bunch of ideas. I looked at them and I'm like, yep, I'm going to apply this. Cause this motherfucker knows way better than me. I'm driving a 2005 Prius at the time <laughs> with 300,000 miles on it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm living in a fucking 600 square foot, one bedroom piece of shit apartment. And this dude's telling me what to do. I'm like, I'm going to listen to him because yeah, yeah. he drives the rolls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shout you know out to I mean? the rolls. <laughs> like, like not to pump your tires, but it's the truth. You yeah, know what yeah. I'm saying? So like, that's really helped me too. Cause yeah. I have no ego with it. Like I have an that's ego. That's cause you actually want to get better in both. Yes. Like, I have an ego when I get under the bar. I'm like, who's the baddest motherfucker here? Yeah. Me. Right. Yeah. Now. Yeah. 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 But, but, that. but I have no ego when it comes to when I come out from under the bar. Mm. Val looks at me the other day. So I miss benches like up here, like real close. And I get on people for soft takeouts. Okay. I think I've probably said it to yeah, you before. Yeah, yeah. Sure. I get on people about that. So I'm bitching about my bench and all this stuff. <laughs> and Val pauses the show we're watching. She's like, can I say something to you? And this was like hours after I had been bitching. This was like, and sure. I was like, I was like, sure. Like I'm thinking something like, are you pregnant? Like what? Yeah. You know, yeah. What's the story. Right. And I'm like, <laughs> she's like, I think you'd have a better time benching if you fully locked out your reps. I need you to know that. And I was just like, 
<laughs> just like uh, she's like she's like you know what you get on Frankie for like for taking out something? she's like that's what your bench looks like. Ramos used like, to tell me that Fuck. George used to tell George used to tell Ramos on the, or th- this is what the group used to say on Sundays that if you take it out soft whoa <laughs> that basically your stretch reflex returns it right to the soft position yeah instead of taking it out yes. already fully locked and then and if you're locked it sits on your bones instead yeah. of your triceps so you have a little bit more time to let the weight settle whatever yep. uh but I, like years ago i would have been like don't fucking tell me what to yeah. do but i was just like yo uh i mean my wife benched 429 at 198 pounds as a female I'm going to listen. She's yeah. a way better bencher than me. And, and she's got the eye. Yeah. So it, I, I just was like, yep, you're fucking so like 100%. I mean, like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like 100%. I'm just going to listen to you. And my bench has in just in like four or five weeks now, like that video I sent you, like I got to hear with the 715. I just kind of like bonk, yeah. finished it. It's because all of my speed work, I've been like bang, it's every smooth. single one of them. And uh, the, so the no ego thing, it's like, I think that's allowed mm-hmm. me to kind of progress in these areas because like at no point am I thinking I'm not asking you how to do business better with an idea in my head of what I think you're going to say. I'm asking you cause I need the whiteboard talk. I yeah. need to fuck. We need to do the thing where you teach me stuff based on your experience. Sure. And then you can figure out, sort through it and say, yo, I, I like this. I like that. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. So that's like how it's just literally, it's been like doing like, progressive overload with my business yeah. <laughs> and and like now it's like dude we get an order of t-shirts me and val fucking put on some fleetwood mac and let's rip these fucking orders out you yeah, know what yeah. i mean like we just handle it it's not stressful anymore it's like well, a notch of confidence every time you encounter yeah, well, yeah you're so scared that you're gonna like send someone the wrong t-shirt and then and then when you do send them the wrong one it's not a big deal you're like bro I'll give you your money back and I'll send you another t-shirt and I'll yeah, have a fucking no customer deal. forever yeah, yeah. instead of it being like this, like, Oh my God, I have this email. It's long game, open. bro. Long game. Yeah. Fuck it. Like I just handle it as it comes. Love it. So. Trayvon, your turn, brother. Um, yeah, I love, I loved like the statement where you said, um, that like you have that, like when you get under the bar, like when you're actually under the bar, you have an ego. Yeah. yeah. But as soon as you're not under the bar, then you don't have like an ego. I fuck with that. Yeah. Yeah. I, re- I really like fucked with that one. And so like, my question would be then is like how how do you like how do you like battle that like e- that ego then when you're like versus like when you are under the bar and then like when you're not under the bar because I think like like an e- like an ego is something that like people battle like so much especially when it comes like to lifting because you see that like with people when they're under the bar like that's like the mindset that you have to have under the bar mm-hmm. but that's not the mindset that you like can carry that like in your life it's a switch bro you yeah. gotta learn how to flip the switch and it's you see it at meets all the time, like guys who step in and from the moment they walk in the door, they're like, nah. it's like hey, dude, it's a 12 hour day, bro. Like, yeah, yeah. You, you yeah. need to chill. And so learning how to flip that switch, it's the answer is like, it's fucking hard. And I still struggle with it. Like, I've definitely had moments where, like, I've said, like, you don't fucking tell me what to do. Are you fucking crazy? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? And then it's like, no, no, you do tell me what to anybody. I'll accept information from anyone because I can't see me. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And so, like. I struggle with it too, because especially that's like, a great statement, by the way. What's that? I can't see me. Yeah, exactly. Like I yeah. can't, I can't, I can't. Like I can't. Like I can only experience what I'm feeling, right? So, I really have struggled with that in the past, where like I've pretended to be humble, but in my yeah. in my brain, I'm like, nah, motherfucker. Like, what do you know? But I've really worked on it. It's something that I do struggle with because I do have an eat. You have to have an ego. These weights will fucking kill you, bro. Facts. Like, you know what I mean? Like we don't think of it like that, mm-hmm. but like, yo, even like 700 pounds on your back, like you could get maimed. Yeah. Like bro. you could literally get hurt. That's where I came and, up with the, your life could change. If I unrack it, I can squat it. I yeah. believe it a hundred percent. Yes. And then I'm going to do whatever it takes to get up from it. Right. So it's like, you have to turn that on. Yeah. I feel like a killer when I get like that. That's the only way there is. And you have to, yeah, you got to be feeling yourself, right? So like, but I'm not a killer at my kid's baseball game. No. And so that's what I had literally one of the coaches say to me. He's like, Bro, I watched what you did this morning. It's when I did that uh, 700 camera bar, like three count positive the week <laughs> yeah. that Louie passed away. He's like, I've never even seen you like say anything to your kid like when he missed a ground ball or something. I'm like, bro, I'm not going to scream like I do on a fucking no. squat at my kid. You know what I mean? Like that's just not, I'm like, I'm a different guy under that's the bar. Co- confidence, right though? Yeah. I think it's confidence. To, it's like something I noticed like when I went to Westside for the first time to visit, 
I'm, you know, who the fuck am I? Whatever. First time in a canvas. And they're, you know, there they are pulling these massive. I remember they were pulling like rack pulls and like, I was just blown away by that. Yeah. I'm over here trying to squat 700 pounds. And every time I got my knees wrapped, everyone that was training came over and spotted the stranger. Mm-hmm. What I noticed was if you are a two plate bencher in a commercial gym, you're going to be a fucking asshole to the guy who only benches a plate. <laughs> because you don't have actual confidence. It's all bullshit. True. But like, if you're like me, dude, like I don't, I have, I don't care. Like that, that I'm going to help people cause I'm yeah. confident in myself. And it's like the better you get at something, the less you have to front. You got it. So like, it's even with like, with like business and shit, like you can tell the people who are not confident <laughs> online coaches because they talk about how fucking good they are. <laughs> I don't need to talk about how good I am. Yeah. I like the, it's just the optics are there. Like if it's you like want to know trying to talk about how tough he is, when you talk to Matt Brown, you, you can, t- you know, he could kill everybody. Dude, in here. He doesn't have to, he like, he doesn't have to flex that no. because, he, because it's like, dude, that guy will throw an elbow and break your fucking jaw. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And he knows it. You know it. Everyone knows <laughs> it. <laughs> so like it's the same thing. I, yeah. Yeah. I think it's a confidence thing too, where it's like, <clears throat> bro, you don't have to be the biggest, baddest motherfucker at your son's game because like, you already proved you were the biggest, baddest motherfucker at 4 a.m. Yep. And then at 9 a.m. when you were doing business deals and then so on and so forth. So when you go there, it's like, I am who I am. Take it or leave it. You know what I mean? That falls in line with my whole shit with the stay hated stuff. Like it just, yeah, it just is. I am who I am. And I'm confident in that. Fuck with it. People have a hard time with that. So I think it's what we should do. I think we will do this as a part one because this is mostly business stuff. Catch up. And I think we do a part two. West Side lifting stories and kind of get into some of that stuff. That's yeah. cool. Does that That's sound great. good? I'm let's, into it. Let's take a quick break and we'll be back for part two. Cool.